to Analog Output. Hello, welcome to Analog Output. Hi, today we're going to take a look at this module here. This is an envelope follower. Now, what is an envelope follower? Well, I would guess you're probably familiar with the idea of an envelope generator module. It's a module that produces a control voltage output that starts from zero and goes up to some maximum and then makes its way back down to zero again. And a very typical use for such a signal is you put it into the control voltage input on a voltage controlled amplifier. On the signal input, you put in an audio signal. Maybe it's signal straight out of a, an oscillator, but it's got a, an amplitude that is constant. So it's constant loudness signal. And then coming out of the voltage control amplifier, you end up with an audio signal whose loudness varies. It starts from zero, it goes up to some maximum. It makes its way back down to zero again, following the shape of that envelope control voltage. So an envelope follower sort of runs that backwards. With an envelope follower, what you do is you put in an audio signal that has a varying amplitude and what you get out of the envelope follower is a control voltage signal that just reflects the loudness profile of that input signal. It, for instance, starts from zero, goes to some maximum, makes its way down to zero, or whatever it is that reflects the loudness of the input signal. And then you can use this envelope the same way you'd use an envelope from an envelope generator to control the VCA or an oscillator or a filter or whatever. So, in principle, if you took the output signal from this VCA and you put it into this envelope follower, what you get out of the envelope follower would be an envelope just exactly like the envelope you put into the VCA in the first place, which would be kind of a dumb thing to do because you've already got that envelope signal. What do you need to regenerate it for? But the point is that you would most frequently use an envelope follower with some external audio signal source, such as, for instance, you might plug a guitar or other instrument into it, or you might plug in a microphone, and then you could use that guitar or your voice or whatever as a source for a control voltage to control aspects of the synthesizer. Now this module, the envelope follower, is based on the design of the envelope follower from the ARP 2600 synthesizer. And yes, the ARP 2600 was designed more than 50 years ago. This is not cutting edge technology we're talking about here. And there have been other envelope follower designs since then. I've looked at a few of them and I've come back to the ARP 2600 design. It's classic, it's pretty simple, and I think it works pretty well. The basic idea of what's going on in there is that you take this audio signal and you put it into a full wave rectifier and what that does is it takes the portion of the audio signal that's oscillating below zero volts and it folds it up so it's above zero volts so instead of having something that oscillates between plus and minus some voltage it's now oscillating between zero and plus some voltage and then you take that and you put it through a low pass filter and the low pass filter filters out the higher frequency stuff, which is the audio oscillations, and leaves you just with the slowly varying part, which is the envelope. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's a fairly simple circuit. There's three op amps and some discrete components. The op amps that were specified for the design in the ARC 2600 were ones that are, are still in production, apparently still available, but not that commonly used. And for my version, I substituted uh, TLO74, and it seems to work just fine. Other than that, I didn't really change anything except that the ARP design is for a plus and minus 15 volt power supply. The Cosmo synthesizer uses a plus and minus 12 volt power supply, so I reduced the gain a little bit on the final output stage 
just to make it less likely that uh, that stage is going to go into clipping. Now, as I said, you're probably going to be using one of these things with some external signal source. And if it's like a guitar, the signal level is going to be substantially lower than the signal levels that you use in synthesizer circuits. And if it's a microphone, the signal is going to be even smaller than that. So you're going to need to boost those instrument or microphone signal levels up to synthesizer levels in order to use them. And in the ARP 2600, they had a preamplifier designed to do that. This preamplifier is designed around a chip that is long since out of production. I don't know, perhaps there's some modern chip that would work as an equivalent. But instead, I decided to follow somewhat the example of Eddie Bergman, who did a stripboard version of the ARP envelope follower. And what he did was he replaced the ARP preamp with two other preamps. One is a instrument preamplifier. It takes instrument level signals and boosts them up to synthesizer levels. The other is a mic preamplifier that takes microphone level signals, boosts them up to instrument levels, and then that goes into the instrument preamplifier to boost it up to synthesizer levels. I decided to do much the same thing, although I chose to use different designs for the preamplifiers. So for the instrument preamplifier, I'm using something from a design by Ken Stone, who has this module called the Stomp Box Adapter. It's designed to sort of allow you to use a synthesizer as a guitar pedal or to use guitar pedals as synthesizer modules by converting back and forth between synthesizer level and instrument level. So the preamplifier from that that takes you from instrument level to synthesizer level is what I used in here. And then for the mic preamp, there's a design that I found online by a guy named Andy Collinson. I thought it looked pretty good. Not that I know much about these things, but it looked plausible. Uh, I breadboarded it and it didn't work. And I did some Googling and I found a discussion online of Collinson's circuit and found somebody saying, well, there really ought to be a resistor added here. Uh, and I tried putting that resistor in on the breadboard and lo and behold, things started working much better. So as modified with that resistor, that's the mic preamp I've got here. So the way it works is you've got this synthesizer in input. This goes directly into the envelope follower. If you have a synthesizer level signal that for some reason you need to extract the envelope from, you put it in here. But if there's nothing plugged in here, it instead uses the output of the instrument preamp. And the input to the instrument preamp is here. So if you've got a guitar, you plug it in here. But if there's nothing plugged in here, the instrument preamp uses for its input the output of the microphone preamp, whose input is here. So if you've got a condenser microphone, you plug it in here. And if there's nothing plugged in here, it uses this, which is a condenser mic capsule mounted on the front panel. So yeah, this module is listening. Be careful what you say. There's two outputs. There's the envelope follower output itself. There's also an output for the preamplifier. So if you have some need for an external signal to be used elsewhere in the synthesizer, you want to run a guitar sound through a filter or something like that, you can just take the preamplifier output from here and send it to wherever you need it. There's two controls. There's this one is the preamplifier gain. So, you know, if your external signal is low level, you turn this up. If it's high level, you turn it down. And then there's an attenuator on the input to the envelope follower itself. So you, you probably adjust this to get a nice level from the uh, preamplifier, big enough but not so big that it's distorting, and then adjust this to get the uh, a proper amplitude on the envelope follower output. And that's the module. You can see it's not terribly complex, one TL074 chip and a bunch of discretes and 
that's about that. So let's take a look at how it works. Okay, here I'm doing something that I said you normally wouldn't do, which is I'm putting a synthesizer signal through the envelope follower. This is the output of the envelope generator that I'm using, and I'm using that to control a voltage-controlled amplifier with an oscillator signal into it, and the output of that looks like this. And this is what I'm putting into the envelope follower, and what I'm getting out of the envelope follower looks like this. So you can see it's pretty similar to the input. Not quite the same, it's a little more rounded here on the corners than in the original, but it's pretty close. And if I vary the input envelope, you can see that the envelope follow responds to that. Can lower the sustain level and so forth and so on. Drop the release a bit and so on. So it's kind of doing what it should be doing. If I give it a really fast attack, you can see that it's not as fast. It doesn't respond to very fast changes in the envelope. If I make a very fast cutoff at the end, it kind of slopes downward. That has to do with the low-pass filter. The lower the cutoff frequency on the low-pass filter, the more sluggish the envelope follower will be in responding to very fast changes in the envelopes. So you make the low-pass filter cutoff frequency a little longer, right? Well, then you run into another problem because if I lower the frequency of the input signal, well, now you see what happens. You've got this ripple here on the envelope because now the input frequency is low enough that some of it gets through the low-pass filter and gets into the envelope, which is not what you want. So if you make the low-pass filter cut off lower, then you slow this stuff down. If you make the cutoff frequency higher, then you raise the minimum frequency that you can use before you start getting ripple like that. So you're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place here. It's a fairly fundamental fact of life with envelope followers. So you, you know, pick the best sweet spot you can and you'll live with that. Okay, here we have a guitar plugged in. Okay, actually it's a ukulele. And we're looking at the preamplifier output. So it's fairly strong and in fact if you play loudly it starts clipping down here. Maybe you want to turn back the preamp gain a little bit. It's one thing about this module. It's not really a plug-and-play kind of thing. You have to mess around with the controls to get things in the region where they make sense. And uh, At least initially you probably want to use a oscilloscope to set this thing up. Okay, so there's our preamp output, and then if we look at our envelope follower output, let me turn up this level a little bit. If I play quietly, I get a low envelope. If I play loudly, I get a bigger envelope. And there I start clipping, so maybe turn back that level a bit. Okay, let's see if we can control the synthesizer with that. All right, now we have it set up with the envelope follower output going into a multiple, and from there it's going over to the control voltage on a VCA, which is modulating the signal from a filter, tracing back to oscillator here and if I pluck a note on the ukulele you 
then I get the oscillator note. Of course, the pitch of the note doesn't change when I change the ukulele note. It's only controlling the envelope. control the pitch with the ukulele, you need something else. But this is controlling the envelope. And of course we can use the envelope for other things too, like controlling the oscillator pitch. Or all sorts of silly stuff like that. So that's the envelope follower module. I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned. We're going to have some other interesting modules coming up soon. See you then on Analog Output.